Ronald had some questions about how to work algebraic word problems. So let's take a look at this particular word problem. On the math test, Mike scored eight more points than Tom. Betty scored 10 less than Tom. Altogether, they earned 241 points. What was Mike's score on the exam? So first of all, a lot of students are like, well, how do I know this is an algebra word problem? Here's how I know it's an algebra word problem, something that's gonna require me to write an equation. I see that Mike scored eight more points than Tom. So Mike's being compared to Tom. And I see Betty scored 10 less than Tom. Betty's also being compared to Tom. But the problem is, if I keep reading, altogether they earned 241 points, what was Mike's score? Nobody ever tells me what Tom's score is. Even though everybody's being compared to Tom, Tom is a mystery. Well, in math, when there's a mystery, that's when algebra gets introduced. That's when we use a letter. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. We're going to introduce a letter to represent this mystery, this thing we don't know, Tom's score. So let's let Tom's score be equal to T. Now, from here on out in all the math do, I do, I'm going to call Tom's score T. And that T is going to stand in for that unknown score and allow us to still figure out this problem, even though we don't know Tom's score. Uh, now, we don't only have Tom's score that we're talking about. We also have Mike's score. And we have Betty's score. I would like to write a expression for each one of these. And we are going to use that T to do it. Okay, so let's look at this first phrase we have. Mike scored eight more than Tom. Mike scored eight more than Tom. That means if you wanted to find Mike's score, you would have to start with Tom's score. But then from there, you would have to give yourself eight more. You would have to add eight to Tom's score in order to get Mike's score. And now I've written an expression to represent Mike's score. If Tom's score is T, then Mike's score must be T plus eight. Next phrase, Betty scored 10 less than Tom. She scored 10 less than Tom. So if you started with Tom's score, if you wanted to find Betty, you would have to take away 10 from Tom's score. Now careful, don't write 10 minus T. That's not the same thing. That would be taking Tom's score away from 10. Um, but uh, Betty has 10 less than Tom. So we got to start with Tom and take away 10. Okay. So now I have an expression to each represent each one of these guys' scores. But unfortunately, I still don't have enough information to solve a mystery. In order to solve a mystery, find out what a mystery letter is equal to, you cannot deal with expressions. You need an equation, an equation. We can't solve for an unknown, a mystery, until we have an equation. So hopefully there's some more information in this uh, problem that's going to allow us to write an equation. Let's see. Altogether, they earn 241 points. There it is. That's the money. That's what we need because we know what all together means. All together means their total score. Now a lot of students freak out. How am I going to find a total with these numbers? Imagine that you didn't have these T's and these, imagine you just knew like they had scores of like 50, 60, and 70 and you wanted to find their total. What would you do? You would just add up the scores. It's no different when it's expressions. I'm going to add Tom's score and I'm going to add that to Mike's score. And I'm going to add that to Betty's score. As ugly as they are, I just added Tom's score, Mike's score, and Betty's score, added them up. And this is all their scores altogether, the total of their scores. And I know, according to this problem, that altogether those scores have to total 241 points. So if I were to add those three expressions, it should add to 241. And now I have the equation that I need. Now that I have an equation, which is two expressions, uh, with an equal sign in the middle, I now have enough information to solve the problem. So let's go for it. Let's start solving. The first thing we need to do uh, when you have an equation is, if at all possible, you should simplify. You should do any work you see on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the equation. And I do see some work that I can do on the left-hand side of this equation. So if you see, there are some like terms that can combine. There's a T. There's a T, and there's a T. I have uh, one, two, three T's. Three T's, and look at that. You can just represent three T's by writing three T. It is that easy. Okay, now I combine those. A T plus a T plus a T, three T's. And now let us look at this. If I have positive eight or plus eight and minus 10 or negative 10. 
Now, you can do this in a calculator. If you did this problem on the GED, you would definitely have a calculator. But I happen to know that 8 minus 10 is negative 2. And so I'll write negative 2 minus 2. Again, I'm combining like terms. Now, that on that side is equal to whatever I had on the right-hand side, 241. Now, I've done all the simplifying that I can know how to do. I've done all the work on the left-hand side that I can put together and all the work on the right-hand side I can put together. So now it's time to start solving, to move things back and forth across the equal sign in order that my letter might be alone. I'm trying to get my letter T alone. Okay, so uh, remember that when you solve, you are working backwards. You're doing the opposite. And so it's important that you also work your order of operations backwards, your PEMDAS or your JEMA. Gemma, however you learned it. We're going to move addition and subtraction first. So take a look. This number here is subtracting minus 2, and so I'm going to move it first by doing the opposite, plus 2. And the rule of algebra is you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. Okay, so I add 2 to both sides. On this side, minus 2 and plus 2 cancel, leaving me with 3t. And on this side, uh, there's the math to do, 241 plus 2, and that will give me 243, new equation. Not done yet, though. It is not solved because the letter is not alone. I've got to move this 3. In order to uh, solve, you do the opposite of what's happening. So let's see what's happening. If the 3 and the t are shoved together like this, they are multiplying. Um, so I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying. I'm going to divide away the 3. Again, the rule of algebra is um, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides and keep my balance. Okay, on this side, 3 divided by 3 is just going to cancel out. I'm just going to have a single 1, single t. And on this side, there's the math to do. 243 divided by 3. Well, 3 goes into 24 eight times. And 3 goes into 3 once. Look, I can divide in my head. If you want to learn to divide in your head, go watch the site division video. It's a super handy skill to have. Okay. Now, but I want you to be careful because too many students just stop right there and go, I'm done, the letter's alone. You arbitrarily picked a letter and you said what it stood for. You better make sure that whatever you solved for is the thing you need. So let's go back and see. I just solved for T, so I know that T is 81. Come back to my word problem, though. Look what my final question was. My final question is, what was Mike's score on the exam? T, if you remember, represented Tom's score. So you are going to have to take an additional step to find Mike's score. And students freak out, like, what step am I going to take? Well, hello, you already told yourself what to do. If you want to find Mike's score and you know Tom's score, all you got to do is add 8. So I'm going to come over here, and what am I going to do? I'm going to add 8 to 81. I'm going to add 8 to it. Uh, T plus T plus 8 would give me 89. And so this is Tom's score, but they didn't ask me about Tom's score. They asked me about Mike's score. So I take the 81 and I add eight and Mike's score is an 89.